Welcome to CAD 201 Parametric Modeling, and we are in Module 3, Project 3, and uh, we are going to jump in and start working with the model history tree. Now, we've been working with this a little bit throughout the last two modules and lessons, but we're going to get a little bit more in-depth on it today, and this is going to be really important to watch that model history tree as it grows and just be as efficient as you can because efficiency is going to make you quicker at your job and it's going to be a better benefit for your company and um, not only that but you're going to be able to edit from this model history tree and we're going to show you all that here uh, this is going to be in uh, and of course your book and uh, this is going to, I think it's chapter four in the book, and it's just the model history tree. And uh, this right here is the first tutorial that we look at. And I'll have this one placed up here. And then I want to go ahead and open up Inventor, and I'll show you some little cool little tricks to get started with this one. There are quite a few drawings this week. We've got, uh, of course, the tutorial. It's going to be bonus points for the tutorial. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five. So you got five of these drawings that I'll have videos on. And then, of course, you'll also have one challenge drawing this week. So it'll be six drawings plus the tutorial. And this time I'm going to offer the tutorial as five bonus points. So that would be pretty nice for you guys. So we're going to start with the first one, the module tutorial. And this one is in standard inches. And using 1060 alloy, we're going to show you a little bit about the properties of this and the mass and and the volume and all that good stuff. So let's go uh, new, uh, English, standard IPT. And uh, slowly open it up. And notice right here is my history tree. And uh, I always like to do a start 2D sketch. I always like to find my XY plane. Okay. We'll get started right on that. Now, when I draw this, I'm thinking about what would be the easiest and fastest method to draw this thing in the most efficient manner. And I think it would be to draw the profile of the front view of this. And I'll show you a trick to that. So let's go ahead and start on that. I'll just start right here. Back up so I can see it. I get it going the direction I want it to go. This is 3.25, and the radius of this, of course, you see the quadrant from here to here, is 2.5. So the radius would be half of this. So it would be 3.25 plus another 1.25 out to this would make that 4.5, right? So check this out 4.5. Draw that in. It's a half inch up. Looks like I'm going back so far. And I'm just going to stop right there. I'm just going to make it easy on myself and start back here and go up and around. 1.75 tall. And again, if I goof up, you know, along the way, it's 0.5 here. And I don't get a measurement just right like this next one. You know, I get that in there and two, so that would be one across, then back up. I can always go in and use my, oh. And you know, I could delete that, or I could just go over here to constraint. I want to use some of these tools. And I can set it um, horizontal and click on it. I got to click there go horizontal see how it fixed it you constrained that so you might have an issue down the road you just got to make sure you know it's constrained uh, I put this one straight down and then I just go in and I'm going to extend that line to that one and I want to trim out this little piece right there now like I said I don't know how far I came on that one so hit my dimension tool from there to there should be 0.75 according to my drawing 
Y'all see that? So you can see my history tree is populating here. Here's my sketch. This is this. And that's basically all I can do right now. So I finish that one up. And I want to extrude it, okay? The 2.5 depth is perfect, okay? So I'm looking at it right now, and I'm trying not to get too much, you know, I'm trying to keep it real simple, trying to keep it fast and efficient. One really good tool on here that you can use is in Modify. You know, if you had this opened up, it would be, you could see all of this, but I'm having to click where I've got split screens. So nice if you have two screens. <laughs> But I want to come over here and just use fill it. And like we said, the whole thing's two and a half inches, so this would be our diameter. So half that is 1.25. So I just do 1.25, come in here and click that corner, click that corner. Okay. Now you see my fillet populate. So here's my first extrusion, and here's my fillet. Okay. So you see it starting to populate. All right, so now I have no other choice but to start a sketch right here. And um, I want to show you guys the hole tool. Instead of doing just a circle and extruding it out, I want to show you another tool. It's called the hole tool. And to use it, you have to have a center point. And it's centered up right there, right in the center of this arc. And you finish the sketch, and then when you come back up here to create, or it's actually modify, you got a hole command. And I click on it, and check this out. You've got all this stuff. This is just a basic hole all the way through. Do you all see this? This is a simple hole. This is a clearance hole. This is a tapped hole. It means it's got threads in it. This has got a counter bore, spot face. we got all those, but... We don't have any of those. We just got a straight hole through it, through all, and the diameter is one inch. And I hit OK on that. And uh, the beauty about using the hole command is whenever we go to annotate this and put this on a sheet to make a technical drawing, it's going to show us all the information about that hole, which makes it so nice. And we'll see that a little bit later, but the hole command is really nice. So you see right here's the first thing we did. This is the second thing. And of course, this is the third thing that we did. Now, all I've got to do is cut this little notch into it and we got it. So I, I don't really think that gets much more, you know, simpler than that for this part. And, uh, you know, I've seen some people do parts like this and they'll have, you know, 10 different, you know, steps involved. Try to think, and it's okay if, if you... Take a few more steps than what I did. You know, it's okay you're learning, but the thing of it is, is you're trying to visualize this thing and how would it be the fastest way and the most efficient way to do this without so many steps. So again, I start 2D sketch here in the face of it. Hit my rectangle and I come in here and the depth of this is 0.75. It don't look like that. It looks like 0.15, but... It is 0.75. You all can look in your book just to make sure. I want to dimension it from there to there. 0.75. Good. And finish sketch. So I got my finished sketch in there, and I want to extrude this thing. Extrude. I just catch all of it. And again, I want to cut, and this is like, you know, it's kind of like a bluish green. That means you're joining. Cut is what I want to do through all of it. And you could have flipped them back and forth, but perfect. So really quickly, we made that part. But one thing is, let's see here, one, four steps. One thing I didn't do right was I didn't locate. I can tell right now this right here is a little bit more narrow than this. I didn't locate. I located it up and down vertically but I didn't do it horizontally so how do I fix that if you come over here always remember when these parametric modeling softwares they'll have a feature mode and a sketch mode now 
the feature mode deals with your cuts, your extrusions, and things of that sort. You're putting it into a three-dimensional uh, view at that point. You're making it a solid object with your feature. All right? And right here's your feature. Well, we know that's the area I need to work on, but if you hit the little plus, here's your sketch that you started with. So if you need to fix something in the extrusion, you double click here. If you need to work with something in the sketch, you double click here. So I, now this is what I need. So I double click and see how it pulls it back up. So when I come in here now, I can dimension right off this corner here to this, and it should be um, according to, to this one point, it should be 0.5. Okay, 0.5. And this should be 1.5. Okay? So when I finish the sketch, did you see it update? And now you can look and see everything looks nice and even. And when I've done that, basically one, two, three, four, four steps. So now, again, like I was saying, if you need to fix something, you just got to find out what you got to fix. And if you hover over your steps, it'll show you where you're at. And like an extrusion, maybe this thing's too uh, too wide. I think I actually put 2.5 on it, but if it's too wide, it's not going to be found in your sketch. It's going to be found in your extrusion. You double click it and see here, I can make that three. And see how it updates and it completely messes everything else up. But I can just double click, go back to it, and change it to back to two and a half. Everything's back to normal. So that helps a little bit. Hope that helps you a little bit with that. So now I want you to look at one thing. I want you guys to look at how you find how you make this 1060 alloy, make it its actual material because. A lot of these things will be uh, taken and they're going to be machined in a CNC machine or they're going to be 3D printed and you need to know what kind of material so the software can pick that up. So if you just come up here, right click on the part, because this, this right here, if I go up here and click on it, it shows the entire part. Right click here, go to Eye Properties, and this will tell you everything about this part. All right, the summary. You can go in here and put the title in here of what this part is called, okay? And I'm not for sure what it's called, but I'll just say it's module one, or module three, and subject, and so on, the manager, the author, project, estimate cost of this. We could put in here, this thing is about $9.50. Okay, vendor, all that good stuff. Status, the part number of it, you know, it's process in engineering, check by, and all this engineering approved date. All that, you can fill all that out. But what uh, I was wanting to show you is the physical side of things. Now, right now, it's just a generic material. We're going to change that to 1060 alloy. Let's see if we've even got that on here. We do have steel alloy. Let's click on it. And I'm not sure if it's 1060 or not. Well, it's going to have to work. It's the only one that I see. That's the only one I see. But see, it has its density. And it gives you its mass. And I'll hit apply to that. So now it turns it to the color of it. It gives us its mass, its volume. It gives it the area of it. And that's really going to be, that's really cool. And that's also going to be a part of uh, your submission form for each part. You're going to provide me a mass and a area and volume. I can't remember exactly how I had those laid out but you got to draw off of these properties, these general properties. It also gets you the, gives you the center of gravity on the part in your X, Y, and Z, and that's important in uh, some of the engineering sides of things, okay? 
and if you click on center of gravity, it tells you some more of its moments and all those good things. So really, really cool. So I want to close that and just make sure that uh, this is going to be a five point bonus. So take you a snipping of this and also grab all your physical. Again, right click I property, go in here to physical and get all that change it still alloy and get these numbers and fill in the appropriate blanks in your submission form. But if you need any help with this, uh, just let me know at any time.